Hi and welcome back to the channel. I'm Sam and this is a Crafty Blinder van build. In this video I create some overhead lockers. Um, I'm not joiner but I think I do okay. Let's see how we get on. I'm shooting this on a new camera. Um, I put it on quite a wide lens. So let's see how it works out. We're going to make some lockers that will run full length of the van above where we're sleeping. So it'll be above these windows. The lockers will also hold this top section of these decorative panels in, along with the frames and the curtains when they go back in. So back to what we're doing. First of all, I've got a template from the front panels. I'm going to offer it up and we'll see, we'll see roughly what it's like. And anywhere where we need to trim it, we'll trim it. But we also need, oh, I forgot the tape measure. We also need to measure, so we'll measure off this edge here so we know that we're square and then we'll offer it up and see how we get on. That is perfect. <laughs> so, <coughs> this this template was taken off the other cupboard that was made last for the other side and it's a mirror image on this side so I'm quite happy with that. That's our template, that's what we need to be cutting. That's the same. I think we maybe need to just trim that back corner a little bit. What we'll need to do as the back of this van rolls in from round about here it kind of rolls in a little bit and as it comes up it rolls in so we're gonna to have to take part of this corner away on this template so what we'll do is we'll cut some of these for the front um, the internals and then when we come back we'll trim this back one we'll then offer up the internals and see how much we need to address on that. From that one template, we ended up producing 10 pieces. Four out of ply, four out of furniture board for the ends, and two internals. This is the front edge, not the rear. As you can see, big difference what the van does it curves in so when we bolt it together you'll see that so this is the template that I've cut out of 9mm ply we'll offer that up and see how it looks very very happy with that. Just measure it again. <coughs> so this is a lot smaller than the template that I cut. So what I've done is I've removed 15mm off this edge and 15mm off this edge. This, were, this is an internal piece that I will screw the frame too and you'll, you'll see how that comes to, together in a minute so there's that bit there to trim out a piece here to trim out and a piece here to trim out and the bottom gets screwed into this yeah, it, it's gonna look good I then fixed two buttons in place these buttons will make up the main frame of the locker um, this is where what you will screw back to the side of your van to hold everything in place. So, this will be the end panel made out of furniture board. This sits in there like that, and we'll secure the buttons through here and through here. There'll be a button that runs from front to back on the top, then all the rest of it will be secured by the panels that we cut fit it in. You don't go all the way to the back, 
because your end panel will screw through this panel and onto this end to make it decorative, to make it look nice. Again, we have a similar problem. We can't square things up with a spirit level. So, I'm going to do is just pop that in there. Show you how we are because we can't use a spirit level in the van we use a square and we work from fixed points we know that the shower is square to the floor and that is our fixed point in this van another technique i use is to take two parallel lines and move around left to right and if they disappear entirely at the same time you know that these are both square to each other and that's a technique i'm using here as i move around both lines disappear at exactly the same time. Just get everything set off. We'll do one end first and then the next. We have all the parts that we'll need to make a basic frame laid out in front of us. It's just a matter of screwing them all together now. So this is the bottom. So this is the bottom of our panel, let's get everything squared up. When I was happy that the frame was good and fitted where we wanted it to go, we then had to take one of the parts that we cut earlier out of furniture board and trim it up because this was going to make the centre divider one of the strengthening parts of the frame. So slap bang in the middle, centre line. To prevent your timber and furniture board from splitting, I always drill pilot holes for my screws. I'm taking a measurement here to see exactly where the centre divider has settled once I've screwed it up. I'm then going to transfer that mark onto the timbers so I get the board as square as possible.
So this is iron on engine, the glue on one side that reacts to heat and this is the same as my furniture board, the same colour as my furniture board. So fantastic match, I don't know if you can see that but it's an iron perfect. So the most important thing about this, make sure the steam is off on your iron. Steam and this product don't go well together. I've got it set at a medium heat. And then it's just apply a little bit of pressure and keep the iron moving. If you happen to make a mistake, you can easily pull this off while it's warm and reapply it. I was cut enough so it hangs over the edge. Let me trim that off. So start at one edge and then work your way back along. I always give it a couple of passes over just to make sure, just to be confident that it's definitely stuck. So this tool here trims vinyl edging. So follow the Use it in the direction arrows. So, edges where you can't get to it, you need a sharp knife. Just happen to have a scalpel kit, which is really good for these sort of jobs. That's it. Job done. That's the finished article.
cut this just a little bit short, about a millimetre short. So when we put the knock on trim on, it fits into the gap around the edge. That'll look good that. And then we can start putting the pieces together. And to be honest with you, it's nearly done. We have to cut the bottom, which slots into here. So from there up to there. I've got this clamp on because the panel had started to delaminate when I put a screw in, so we've actually glued it and clamped it. We'll leave that overnight and it'll be fine. We'll recess in this in tomorrow, and then when we put the panels in, it'll all sit nice and flush. When we put the doors on here, they'll sit nice and flush. Same again there, and same again there. Then all that's left to do is cut the base panel and cut the doors. And have a good bloody tidy up. <laughs> Might actually do that now, to be honest. Right, see you tomorrow. Profile's now been rebated in, and a screw countersunk on the front. Same there, and the same this end. However, this panel here, I made a bit of a a mess on the end of it so the last little bit runs in so I've a square on it a few times and let's get a straight edge <coughs> let's show you so putting a straight edge on here you can see how much it's out let's, let's do that again so put a straight edge on and there's a little mistake there so we've done put a bit of a I can't see that, it's just blurring. Let's see if we can get it to zoom in a bit. So yeah, where I've made the mistake, we've uh, we've packed it out a little bit there at the top. Just a little little packer in there, screwed it. It has pulled in a little bit, but I think all in all, we should be able to to manage that a little bit once we get everything else bolted up. Right, let's get cracked on. I really hate cutting these panels. And the reason being, if you make a mistake, it's very costly. <laughs> these panels don't come cheap. So I spend a little time and I measure and measure. Just. Watch your finger there, son. Editing these videos is a lot of fun because I get to watch what I did maybe six months ago. Um, I'm quite behind with some of these videos. But the snow on the van... I'm wearing three jackets to get this job done. And like many other people, this is what you do just to get the job done. But you forget it. As you're building the van, you forget all this. You forget what you go through to make your dream happen. This 
one here, I need to re-drill it. I went in at an angle and I, uh, I came on the side. <coughs> one more screw. There it is. should be square now so let's give it a little check yes 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 The first pieces we cut for this frame are the last pieces to be added. These screws will be hidden from sight. Along the bottom I'm going to have a little shelf and then the top screws will be hidden by the shape of the body. This is another one of them jobs I really, really detest. This tool can undo lots of hard work in a split second. If you slip with this, um, it does make a mess so please take your time make sure that you're ready for it jumping around if it if it needs to jump around but uh, the secret is just to go slow and steady take little bits out at a time You don't really need to put PVA glue in with the knocking trim, but I always like to add it just just to give it that little bit of more security. Before installing the knock-on trim, um, due to the weather, I've warmed it up um, just to make it a little bit easier to work with. So where we have a, a bend like that. Found it better to remove the trip the inner T. Just makes life a lot easier when you come to put it up. It just wasn't trying hard enough. As always, I like to check that everything fits and measures up and goes right back into the places where I intended it to go. A bit of a sanity check, really. Checking as you go along stops you from making big mistakes that you have to correct at the end. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've hoped it's been helpful in some respects. Um, the next video, we'll be making the doors and fitting the furniture and the light into the cabinets. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.